Well, welcome back to another ADS editing for news tip and this time we're looking at color again and the first shot I'd like to look at is this PTC shot at the airport. Now it's a bit overexposed but it's also got a dubious color temperature. That's probably because it was balanced under different lighting conditions. I expect they've recently been inside and they've popped outside to do the PTC and maybe got the exposure and white balance a little bit off. If we look over here at the waveform monitor on the right and the vector scope on the left, you can see on the vector scope that there's a significant lobe across to one side to the red, red, yellow side of the, the vector scope. And on the waveform monitor, which is in color mode here, luminance Y channel color, uh, we can see her face, which is this big red blob here represented representing her face. Now, unfortunately, the top of her forehead is very similar to the brightness that we see up here in the overexposed um, top of the building. That's a bit unfortunate. That will make it difficult to get significant contrast back into her face. But let's have a go. So the first thing I'd like to apply is the primary color correction tool. You can just see here, just the primary color correction tool. I'm going to double click on that. Bring that over here. I'm going to leave the curve alone for the moment and we're going to try white balancing the shot first. So we don't really need to see the waveform monitor. What I can say is that we need to push it away from the orange and towards blue and it also looks like there's not much green in here so we need to get rid of the red bias. And what you'll notice on the vector scope on the left hand side is that this lobe here will skew back down through the middle. Now the middle of the vector scope represents no color. So both white and black exist here in the center. And when we push our colors, they'll go through the middle and out to the other side, whichever color we're choosing to bias towards. So let's do that with our color temperature. If I slide it all the way across, you can see that they're pushing across to blue and back and they go through the center okay so I think we could wind it down like this you can click in here and use the cursor keys or the arrow keys going up or down I think that looks pretty good much more balanced this looks more reasonable over here now her face and I think it needs a bit more green so let's punch in a bit of green we might go up a little bit dragging click and drag up About seven units. This looks pretty uniform. The concrete looks nice and white or gray. The wall in the background looks gray. If we have a look on the waveform monitor, we can see that it's a little bit high. So we could pull that exposure down just a bit to get it underneath 100. Typically, you shouldn't really be burning out 100% unless it's a light source. But in this case, there's not much else in here. So we'll leave that go. The best way to change the exposure of an image is to first of all use the exposure tool and then after that if you need to tweak what happens in the middle of your image you're best off using the gamma control. The lift is really just to settle the darkness at the bottom so we could dry that stretch her back down so that we get more blacks and we're getting more contrast in the image. You'll notice that her face has also come down. We can't overdo the black or lift change because it gets all very crushed. This is called crushing blacks. And you'll notice that down the bottom of the waveform monitor, all the image gets crushed up at the bottom. And that's not ideal. You really just want to touch on the bottom line with things that probably should be black, like in the foreground here underneath her ears, that would be quite black, um, things like that. Unfortunately now, of course, it's underexposed a little bit. We can pop our exposure perhaps back up. And if we think that her face is still a little bit contrasty, it shouldn't be too shiny, we could pop over here to our mid highlights and drag that across a little bit to reduce the contrast. Using this gradient picture here that I've generated from Edius, we go from black on the left all the way to peak white, 100% IRE units on the waveform monitor. So here it is at the top, 100% white, all the way down to black wet zero. Now, if I change your gain to improve the brightness of the picture. Maybe they're underexposed the faces. We do this. Notice how the slope of the line is going more vertical. That's increasing contrast. 
So what you'll notice on our picture on the right hand side here is there's more white which means that all the greys are being jammed up closer together so the effect will be a much contrastier face and likewise if we decide to pull down the blacks in our image because it was overexposed a little bit at the bottom watch what happens to the line it comes down but so does our white value so our white value would be coming down 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 till it becomes correct and then we say oh we need more brightness in the image so we push up our gain some more and the line becomes even more vertical and maybe we push exposure into the image you can see that it's changing the angle even more so we're becoming very contrasty so contrasty means that we're changing from black to white in a very short space watch what happens when we change the gamma to the middle of the image here i'll slide that across and the image bows up towards it so there's some increased contrast at the bottom here it becomes more vertical but it preserves the brightness somewhat from middle gray up to white so it's much more preferable to change exposure this way because it doesn't modify the contrast as badly at the top part of the picture so it doesn't make people's faces all shiny because that's less than ideal so this would always be a preference if you're doing a minor tweak and you want to get your picture a little bit brighter then certainly a little bit of exposure but bear in mind as you can see here it's pivoting from the black at the bottom and it's increasing contrast the same when we change gain it pivots from the bottom and increases contrast so if you want to brighten the image without losing the the correct contrast from the camera you just push in a bit of gamma let's turn our primary color tool off that's what we ended up with and this is what it looked like before for an extra bit of tweak you could place a three-way color tool on here and just pull some saturation out of those highlights so you'll notice the top of the image is reducing those blues if I move this away have a look at the top of the waveform here as I do that pull the saturation down put it back very blue dial it back a little bit and even doing a three-way color tool if we do auto color correction it won't really work very well if we pick a gray like this you end up not getting the right kind of correction uh, even if I picked uh, this gray up here it's close up it's not correct if I pick some black in the background it's closer it's still not correct so you don't really get the same result um, this is only good if you're quite close, not miles away. Throw that away. When you're this far out of white balance, you really need to do it manually. Okay, well, I hope you got something out of that. That's how you use the waveform monitor and the vector scope in order to correct a very badly out of balance shot.